Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how I figured out how to wire up the fans on the GTI. Adding electric fans to a car is a really common and actually pretty easy upgrade to do. The reason that I went with two electric fans versus the one fan is that one, it's going to move more air, and two, it's going to clean up the engine compartment which is becoming incredibly high-priced real estate. And I spent plenty of time getting very familiar with the wiring diagram for this fan setup to try and find the best, easiest, most affordable way to make the fans work as close to the way they did from the factory. One thing I wanted to make sure that I did is retain the factory fan control module so that I could keep my air conditioning in the vehicle. If you were to eliminate air conditioning, doing this is quite a bit easier. Now you may also be intimidated by all this stuff that I have on the board. Don't worry, this is a really easy fan setup to understand. And after studying and analyzing the diagram, it's a pretty easy setup to rewire for your two electric fans. One of the big challenges for the system in retaining all the factory stuff is that the factory fan has two series resistors installed in its housing. That presents a challenge because now it's gonna be harder to drop the speed for our other two fans. We could have just powered both fans all the time if the fans were on, they were both on high speed, but I wanted a little bit more flexibility in the system than that. Before considering how to wire in new fans, it's really important to understand how the old fans work. For our basic fan setup, it's very simple. We have power coming in, there is a fuse up above here. We have our thermal switch, we have our fan control module, and then of course our fan. There is also one more thermal switch for the high speed. It only connects to the fan control module and is on the next page of the wiring diagram. The way this functions is power is sent in, always available at the thermal switch. At a certain temperature threshold, this switch of the thermal switch closes, sending power to the fan control module, as well as down our wire to our motor. When it gets to our motor, it goes through the series resistor array. It goes through on low speed, one, two resistors before going to the motor. These resistors reduce the amount of current that can pass through, thus lowering the speed of the fan. When we hit that next temperature threshold, our thermal switch closes on the other side. This sends power to the fan control module. The fan control module then sends power to our fan, it only goes through one resistor on the middle speed and then to our fan. For the high speed side thermal switch, it functions basically the same. The switch closes, sends signal to the fan control module. Fan control module then sends power out and it goes just directly to the motor and then of course to ground. So this is how our factory setup is able to have one fan but three different speeds. So the big question is, is how do we take this setup and manipulate it in a way where we can run two electric fans. And remember that this series resistor is built into the fan motor. I actually did disassemble it and try and reuse it, but it just wasn't happening. So let me show you the setup that I'm running for the GTI. This is the fan setup that I used on the GTI. I'm eliminating the fan that came in the vehicle but I'm retaining all the controls and everything essentially upstream from the fan. So the way this one's going to work is power comes in, the, at the temperature threshold, this switch closes, it sends power to the module as well as down our wire to fan one only. So our low speed is only going to be powering one of the two fans. For the next fan speed, as our thermal switch sees that next temperature threshold, it closes, sends power to the fan control module. Fan control module then says, hey, here's some power, sends it out down to our fan two. So now on speed two, fan one is running and fan two is running. Same thing for speed three, the other thermal switch closes, sends signal out and then to our fan. On fan speed three, we have fan one powered by this side of the thermal switch and fan two powered by the fan control module relay or a fan control module set either on mid speed or on high speed. Really the key to having this function this way is the thermal switch. These connections stay closed till the temperature drops below whatever threshold that they're set for. So if this is set for 85 degrees Celsius, as long as the temperature is above 85 degrees, this connection is made 
which means that this fan is always going to be on. It really can't get much simpler than doing it this way. There are tons of other ways you could do it. You could add relays in and have those function and operate the fans. You could have both fans running all the time. If you were to eliminate the fan control module, it gets to be a really easy circuit. This is about as simple of a circuit as it's going to get. We have our low speed fan coming in. This connection is made when temperature threshold hits, powers fan one. When the temperature threshold over here hits, fan one remains spinning and moving, and then that powers fan two. This is very similar to how I had the setup on the Cabrio. Even though I was only running one fan, I actually just had it set on the low side. So if you wanna run two fans simply off of the thermal switch, you can do that very easily. If I were doing this, I'd probably add two relays to put less stress through the thermal switch and on these wires here, but either way, it should not be a problem. On the wiring, you'll notice that I have two and a half, four and six millimeters. These wires coming out of the fan control module are pretty big wires. The wires for the fans that came attached to it were right about in the ballpark of two and a half millimeters. To me, that says there's not gonna be a ton of current draw from these fans, so I don't need to worry about going from a six millimeter wire down to a two and a half millimeter wire. In a lot of cases, that would be a problem. You essentially create a bottleneck for current or a fusible link that can be a problem. But with either this setup or the setup I just had with the fan control module, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. So that begs the question, how do you figure out your setup? Well, it's actually not that hard to figure out. What you need to do is remember that fans only require power, require ground, and a way to turn them on. In the case of our fan control module, it was either the thermal switch or the fan control module turning them on and off. So you need to make sure you understand how they're being turned on from the factory setup. Then all you need to really do is kind of shift that around and apply it to your new fan setup. We went from one fan to two, but we had three different speed inputs. So we can easily apply this one on as speed one, both on as speeds two and speeds three. We could have tried to find a series resistor to cut down the current applied to the fans and slow them down, but not all fans are meant for that. So I applied fan one as low speed and one and two both on as my mid and my high speed. Once you figure that out, again, make sure you're using the correct wiring, make sure you're using the correct 40 to 50 amp relay is usually the best setup for this kind of circuit. If you're going with the aftermarket add-on ones, they really give you all that stuff. They work really well. They usually include a new thermal switch and a small module. Just please do not use the kind that you jab the little probe into the radiator in. Not a cool, <laughs> literally, not a cool way to do that. Don't wreck your radiator. There's plenty of other setups that work incredibly well and you don't need to look like an amateur jabbing it right through the radiator. So guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions and comments, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube and ding the notification bell or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. If you want exclusive content, discounts you can't get anywhere else to places like SP Automotive, who builds wiring harnesses, by the way, Eurowise, Eastwood, MT Knives, Adams Polishes, and more, check out the crew membership program. Awesome way to help support the show, help me keep the lights on, and get a cool, rad return on your investment. You can also check out the Patreon that you guys asked me to set up to support, or really just use the Amazon link. Mash that link, buy what you're gonna buy anyway, and it costs you that many dollars. All right, guys, hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. I enjoy this kind of punishment for myself. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.